Research. I'm the director of Systems Biology Ireland in Dublin. We are an interdisciplinary institute consisting of about one third computational um, people and about two thirds experimentalists. And we have actually both in the same building, so it's under one roof, which is still quite unusual, but that enables us to use both experiments as well as computational modeling to analyze biological systems. And our favorite is communication networks within cells, so these are called signal construction networks. And they are actually affected by pretty much any disease because they coordinate what cells do, what happens in the cells, whether the cells grow, whether they die. And therefore, these are sort of the controllers of our body. And <clears throat> therefore, in diseases like cancer, they are heavily affected, they go wrong, they transmit the wrong information. And uh, this is then when tissues, for instance, start to grow without restriction. They are also actually a big source of uh, therapeutic interventions because a lot of drugs, especially the new ones, target these nodes in these networks, either trying to set them right or more often to break networks which have gone wrong so that the cell will die. And so we are trying to use this knowledge, what we learn from these networks, in order to develop new means of diagnostics and new means of therapy mainly for cancer and what I talked about today was <coughs> about childhood cancers. So childhood cancers are fortunately quite rare but they're quite devastating and also there is actually not a lot of therapeutics and not a lot of um, diagnostics being specially developed for childhood cancers because they are so rare. And so there's a certain gap, you know, in terms of research and in terms of bringing that to the clinic. Uh, what we can do now very well since a few years, increasingly well, is doing all this molecular profiling where we can generate huge amounts of data on individual people. But we actually don't really know then yet what to best do with those data. Unfortunately, it hasn't been that simple that we, we have a mutation in a gene and now you can design a drug which will target the corresponding protein and that's it. So that simple correlation, here's a mutation, we design a drug and we get a cure, that unfortunately didn't hold up. And the reason why it didn't hold up is because these mutations affect networks and then the networks, <coughs> it's like percolating, you know, like a ripple effect to the whole network and it's not only the one thing which goes wrong, there's many things which are going wrong and also many things how the network can correct an intervention by a drug. So this is why we need to think in terms of networks when we design these new therapies. And in uh, that story which I was, was telling today, we did exactly that. So we <coughs> focused on neuroplastoma, which is a quite common childhood tumor, affects young children. The, peak is um, around two years of age and half of the patients are younger than two years. It's a tumor which arises from the adrenal glands and the symptoms are typically the babies get a huge belly and the parents get worried and take them to the doctor and the tumors can grow massive. It's also another um, interesting aspect to this tumor. It can be extremely, extremely heterogeneous. So it can kill the child within a few months or it can go away spontaneously, just go away without any therapy. The therapy which is used in the clinic is genotoxic chemotherapy, which pr can produce very long-term side effects, very nasty ones like secondary cancers, hearing loss. Uh, so it is really important to find out whom to treat and how aggressively to treat. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of biomarkers for that, to select those patients. And so what we did, we generated a lot of this molecular profiling data on cell lines first, then integrated all this data <coughs> to reconstitute these signal construction networks. And then on the computer, we actually can simulate what happens, you know, what goes wrong. And uh, through the simulations, we then could identify the key molecules which, act which actually control what's going wrong. And then we went to patients because instead of measuring everything again, what we did in the cell lines, you now only measure the things where you know which are the control points. 
And then you can make actually highly personalized models. So each patient has his or her own model. And then you can start predicting, well, how will this patient respond to chemotherapy? And this is exactly what we did. So uh, we could identify <coughs> control modules in a pathway called GNK, which are prognostic for uh, how a patient will do, how the disease will progress. And uh, that even applies to high-risk patients, which we couldn't identify previously. Turning that around, we actually also can use these predictions to design better interventions or better therapies. And for this we started looking at drug resistance, so we started the tumors which had been treated, gone away, but then came back and the patient relapsed. And we actually see in those relapsed tumors that changes in these modules, which are prognostic, also actually predict whether the tumor becomes resistant to drugs. So we can now build on that and we are now actually working very closely with the Children's Hospital in Dublin where we will follow neuroplastoma patients from diagnosis to the course of treatment, taking samples and refining the model. But the upshot, and I think the really important thing, is that uh, this is a computer model being used <coughs> to simulate the patient, to simulate how a patient responds, and then use this as a very, very personalized biomarker.